Hi guys, Ronnie here and welcome to the workshop. A couple of months ago I brought you my personal review and views on the brand new Durace DI2 group set that I've been using for the past, well, half a year or so. And on my gravel bike I decided to go for the Altegra version of basically the same group set. And there are a couple of key differences that I want to point out. However, I'm not going to talk about on-road performance here because, well, that's pretty much identical in most aspects to the race. Instead, since it's on my gravel bike, I will try to talk about why I chose uh, this particular version for the gravel bike, what I had before and how do they compare. So, to talk about the first point, my main idea behind going uh, to Ultegra for gravel is that because it uses heavier and arguably cheaper materials, it's more tough and durable. And particularly I'm talking about the lever braids, which are aluminum instead of carbon. So in the event of a crash, they're not going to break off. Maybe they will bend or warp, but um, it should be still rideable, which is important in a gravel race. And the same goes for the rear Mac, which again uses an aluminum cage instead of a carbon one. And the same benefits should apply there. So that basically covers the differences between the two group sets. Apart from weight and these material changes, there really isn't anything in terms of functionality. Uh, apart from one annoying niggle, I find that the cassette uh, has one sprocket that is really quite loud and makes a ticking noise and I had the same issue and a couple of people reported on this as well with the older 11 speed AG800 11-34 version uh, there it was the third largest cog here I think it's the fifth and no matter how you adjust uh, the micro adjustment on the rear Mac it just still does that and you can get rid of it to some extent, but then it messes up the shifting at the other parts of the cassette. So uh, I don't know why that is. It's not typical for Shimano to make a mistake like this, but I know it's not present on the Durace version of this cassette. And at some point I was thinking about switching to that one, but then I realized that I don't really need that because I'm not in that gear and that much so i can just live with it for now at least but um, from the functionality perspective this really is the only thing i could point out now on my previous gravel bike i had grx di2 11 speed of course that's still not available in the 12 speed version and uh, that group set uh, always scores very highly in testers reviews and i liked it too Mm, really no major issues with that on my previous girl bike but then I switched onto this one and now I have a bit of trouble recommending it to be honest because I don't really see a point in differentiating a gravel group set from that uh, from a road one anyway even if you just consider the top uh, cyclocross racers all use normal basic uh, road group sets, so Durace even in most cases um, at the highest level of the sport with any modifications apart from the front gear ratio so I think that just says a lot so let's just start talking about this component by component to give you a brief explanation so the first major difference of course between GRX and these new Ultegra levers is uh, the lever shape and the design of the rubber hood. Now this one is much less pronounced, much softer, and I think it's much nicer on the hands, just a lot more comfortable. And in terms of looks, probably not as good looking as GRX, but still I like how they, how they feel in the hands and how they perform, and the ergonomics are just really top notch. And the shift pedals have also, on the size of them, have also been increased with better textures, so again, it's no longer an advantage to GRX and if you compare GRX to the older versions of the road group set you had the addition of servo wave which is a braking technology that modifies the leverage ratio between how you 
uh, pull the brake and how the pistons retract uh, down here at the slave cylinder. But that technology is now present here in the road versions as well. So again, that's a, an advantage that the old group set no longer has, or the gravel group set no longer has. It's not an old group set yet because there is no replacement arguably. So if you go back uh, down to the brake calipers, these are now better than GRX because it's the new design with the two-piece caliper. Uh, it has more pad clearance and easier bleeding. So that's a plus. Brake rotors, they're all interchangeable and compatible with each other. So that's a moot point. Uh, front shifting. Now that's an interesting point with GRX. Now, on my gravel bikes, uh, both the old one and the new one, I'm using the same set of cranks with the same gearing. So this is a, a semi-compact 5236, so essentially road gearing. And because of that, I was reaching the limits of adjustment of the GRX front mag, uh, which is not ideal to be honest. It did work, um, and it did work flawlessly, but if I were to change any other aspect of the setup, it probably wouldn't anymore. The reason for that is that uh, GRX designed for the GRX crank set, which has a slightly wider Q factor and uh, slightly wider chain line. So in order for this setup to work, I have to, well, adjust it all the way inboard and to accommodate the road setup. And Officially, it doesn't even take a 52 uh, tooth chain ring, so yeah, it wasn't supposed to work. In my case, luckily, it did. Of course, there's no problems with this one because it's a dedicated road derailleur, so the setup works perfectly, and there's plenty of room for adjustment in all directions. And yeah, arguably, the new design of the front neck just shifts a lot faster and more reliably even with the old chain rings so that's a big plus again and if we move on uh, to the rear mac this i think was the biggest problem with grx because yes it uh, did have a clutch it did have adjustable tension on the clutch but i just don't find or never really found that to be very effective honestly the yeah, the clutch just didn't really do anything in terms of managing the chain. It had the same or even more chain slap than I'm experiencing here. And here, arguably, it's not that much. And the chain retention is perfectly reliable, even in the rough stuff. So honestly, there's no improvement or there was no improvement uh, for me in that regard. In fact, there's a slight disadvantage with the clutch because the way it works, it just increases your drive train friction, particularly when you shift a lot. So, yeah, I think in this regard, again, uh, this new rear mag is just better. And then, of course, you get the wider spread or the smoother steps because it's 12 speed. So that's an added bonus. And if you talk about gearing, even if this is a dedicated road setup, the widest range cassette is 1134. So same as before with the 11 speed gravel version. So you're not losing anything there and you just get one more step. So it's smoother. And here, even though it's a big cassette, I never really had any issues with the steps being too big. And of course I'm not running out of gears because that 34 tooth cog is just massive. So, um, yeah, that's uh, all positives for me. Then there are the minor installation things. Of course, here it's much more simple because it's a semi-wireless setup. So basically you just need to route two wires through the frame, put the battery inside and you're off. Uh, of course, you can still wire it if you prefer it that way. It does uh, bring up the battery life considerably, which um, if you're doing extremely long ultra endurance cycling or some bikepacking events, etc., then in that case it might be a factor and that might be a benefit for the old group set. 
but as I said you can wire this one up just as well and then uh, that benefit uh, resists. So to sum it all up, even though this group set is a dedicated road group set, I think it's better and really it's much better than the dedicated gravel group set from before and honestly I can't really see why you would need to design something specific for that because it just works flawlessly. Maybe you could add the clutch to this uh, rear mech but as I said it didn't bring the benefits I was hoping for earlier uh, and maybe you could add a wider gear range. There is the option of the 36 cassette in the 105 version so yeah I think all the bases are covered maybe except from one by setups but for gravel I just don't think they make too much sense in most cases so maybe for recreational use but not for competition certainly so yeah that basically sums up my experiences with this group set and the one before if you like this video and want to see more of this then of course don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you're interested in going uh, into even more detail then check out our private discord group which is linked below uh, where you can join and ask me different questions about your setup and I can definitely do more to help you out there. So that's all for today, thanks for watching and see you next time.